today on the Trend Out Loud podcast. Pierce Morgan is mainstream media. This might be the biggest exposing that we have had thus far. The things I'm going to read to you, I'm going to play for you, are shocking. This is the first of its kind. Nobody has gone on mainstream media and have has called out celebrity names this big probably ever. What up? It's your boy, Trying Out Loud, and I'm back with another episode. All right, it's Friday morning, my favorite day of the week. Y'all know how I get down, but before we kick off the weekend, I got a good show set up for you guys. All right, I got four lead stories. We're going to kick it off by having a YouTuber insider that was on the Pierce Morgan show calling out Jay-Z and Beyonce. Trust me, stay tuned. You guys are going to want to hear this. It's probably one of the most explosive accusations we have heard thus far with all of this Diddy and Hollywood and hip-hop stuff that we got going on. After that, we're going to go into our second lead story. We're going to talk about the author that uh, wrote the memoir, the Kim Porter Memoirs. I sat down and watched a two-hour interview. I'm going to give you some of the shocking details of that interview. Our third lead story, I'm going to give you guys an update on Diddy's bail. He might be getting out of jail next week. I have the update from Megan, my friend Megan, who is a trial journalist and following all of the hip-hop trials. Then our fourth lead story, I'm going to give you guys an update on Cassie. She says that she is hurt by all of the baby oil and meme jokes. Then when we're done with lead stories, we're going to jump into quick news. We're going to talk about Cardi B, Russell Simmons, Bank of America, Common and Jennifer Hudson, Eminem, and Sydney Starr finally getting her surgery. Then when we're done with quick news, we're going to jump into question of the day. And as always, we're going to close out with a little bit of sports news. Y'all know what time it is. Turn your TVs, your radio, or your devices up. I'm about to start this show. Let's go. Jaguar Wright claims she knows victims of Jay-Z and Beyonce. She says they're a nasty little couple that does nasty things things all right in the month a month and a half that we've been talking about these diddy allegations and hollywood and everybody being exposed i think this might be the biggest exposing that we have had thus far after diddy jaguar Wright is literally literally naming names and calling out jay z and beyonce i have all the clips and i'm gonna run them down for you guys right now all right so before i start i just want to read a little bit of the article all right it says while eyes were on diddy as he faces his legal woes jaguar wright claims that beyonce and jay-z have victims also actually sorry before 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 i start i just want to say something to you guys this is the pierce morgan show Pierce Morgan is mainstream media. We have a lot of people on YouTube and Twitter and platforms that have these shows, kind of like mine, that, you know, you can get away with saying things that uh, may be a little bit more salacious than mainstream TV. For Jasmine, uh, for sorry, for uh, Jaguar Wright to go on Pierce Morgan and say these allegations, the things I'm going to read to you, I'm going to play for you, are shocking. This is the first of its kind Nobody has gone on mainstream media and have has called out celebrity names this big, probably ever. Nobody. This is the first time we're hearing the name of Jay-Z and Beyonce on mainstream media. Pierce Morgan was on CNN. Pierce Morgan is mainstream media. That's why this is so huge, okay? Just to give you context. All right, um, Jaguar Wright claims while on Pierce Morgan Uncensored that there are thousands that have yet to come forward and she specifically knows three of them. She calls Jay-Z and Beyonce a nasty little couple who does nasty things. She also alleges that they both hold people against their will and puts them on planes unconsciously, and she's making reference to Aaliyah's death during her fatal plane crash. Okay, that's one. I have all the clips. Just hang on. Let me just get through these uh, articles, and then I'm going to start playing clips for you, okay? Um, Where is the next one here? 
All right, here it is. Jaguar Wright didn't hold back as she appeared on Pierce Morgan Uncensored, where she doubled down on her long-standing accusations against both Sean Diddy Combs and Jay-Z. Jaguar Wright, known for speaking out against powerful figures in the entertainment industry, accused the two hip-hop moguls of being part of a larger conspiracy that has been controlled and exploited by the music industry for decades. Stay with me. For the past four years, Jaguar Wright has been vocal about her accusations, but the recent charges against Diddy have put a spotlight on her claims. She slams Jay-Z for his silence in the wake of Diddy's legal troubles, accusing him of avoiding accountability. Jay-Z has been notable in his silence since the charges were brought against Diddy, Pierce Morgan noted, to which Jaguar Wright says yes. Okay, so those are the two quick articles. Let's jump now into the actual video that I have, okay? Um, uh, also, to be fair, I'm going to read a little bit of Jasmine Wright's, uh, Jasmine Wright's background after, but let me just get through the whole thing, okay? Um, so uh, I've already said how huge it was for her to be going on Pierce Morgan saying this, okay? That's the first thing, huge. Don't, don't let that pass you by. The fact that she's been saying this on her own YouTube channel for four years is one thing. Her saying this on Pierce Morgan Uncensored is another. I cannot emphasize that enough. It is monumental and I think one of the biggest claims we've ever seen on mainstream media, okay? So I'll read to you a couple of things that I pulled and then I'm going to play the clip for you, okay? So she calls out uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce. She says that there are over a thousand victims. She says that she knows three victims that are willing to testify against Jay-Z and Beyonce and the things that they have done. Now, does this mean that Jasmine, uh, sorry, I keep calling her Jasmine, that Jaguar is going to bring these three people to um, the, the feds? Are we going to see an investigation against Jay-Z and Beyonce like we did with Diddy? If you remember, Cassie first came out, had, these, uh, had the civil suit against Diddy. Diddy didn't want to settle it. He settled it in 24 hours. The public knew about it, and then the feds came around with their charges. So it's smelling like this could be it. Jaguar's been saying this for years and years and years, talking about uh, Diddy and Jay-Z, and she's always said that Jay-Z was worse than Diddy, okay? Worse. Uh, like I said, I'll tell you about Jaguar's background in a minute. Jaguar used to actually be Jay-Z's backup singer, okay? She's in the industry, so I'm not saying that makes it right what she's saying. I'm just saying she's not some, like, person who just doesn't know anything okay she is in the music industry and she has worked with jay-z and she has said the reason why jay-z is worse is that he's smarter than diddy and he actually is not as overt as diddy and he is better at hiding his things um anyway so like i said she has uh three victims that she knows so okay that's i'm gonna play the clips for you and then i'm gonna come back and talk about some other things here is her talking about the thousands of other victims take a listen how many victims potentially do you think there could be? Thousands. I've talked to hundreds that I deal with still myself. All right. Now here is her saying uh, that Jay-Z and Beyonce are nasty little couples and they, they hold people against their will. Shocking, shocking allegation. Listen to this. They're a nasty little couple. They do nasty things. What do you think happened with Kim Keeping Paul? people against their will, putting people on planes while they're unconscious, just like Aaliyah got on that plane. All right, and now here she is saying that she has three people that are willing to testify. Again, I don't know if it's civil or criminal, but she, ha she says that she knows three people right now that are willing to testify. Take a listen. I have three victims right now who are willing to give testimony about not only what Mr. Carter has done to them, but his wife as well. Okay, so now that you have that, let's go on to two more really, really uh, important points. Her looping Jay-Z and Diddy together, saying that they're monsters. Just listen to this. So here now, she's, she's grouping uh, Jay and, 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 um, and Diddy together. Why this is important is she, if she's grouping them together, does this mean that the feds might be looking into Jay-Z too? We all know that Jay and Diddy 
We're always super close. All the Rock Nation brunches, every time that you see Jay-Z out publicly at these events, Diddy was there. Is she trying to say that the feds are looking at Jay-Z too? I don't know. Take a listen to this, and then I'll go on to one of the, I think, the biggest or the second biggest, because the Jay-Z and Beyonce one is biggest. But anyways, listen to this. Why there's no vindication for me? Mm. Because for four years, I've been screaming, not just Diddy, but Diddy and Jay-Z are monsters. And the victim-making machine kept going on. All right, now here is Jaguar implementing Clive, da uh, Clive Davis and Lucian uh, Gray. I don't know if it's his last name, Lucian Gray or Gray Gregor. Sorry, you're going to hear her say in a second. Now, Clive Davis, we all know, is one of the most powerful people in the music industry. He has been alleged, too, to have a lot of um, sexual assault allegations. Never been convicted, but there's a lot of things going on around him, too. And Lucian is the guy who is heading Universal Music right now and just gave Drake that big deal. These are one of the two the two most powerful men arguably in music. Here is Jaguar saying that these two guys are complicit and knew what Diddy was doing and they actually handpicked him to do this, which is crazy, but take a listen. Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey Epstein, Robert Kelly, Sean Combs have one person in common professionally and privately, Sean Carter. This has been a fist of tyranny that has been punching through. He's been covered and protected by not only Clive Davis, but Lucian Grange. He was selected to keep the culture in line so the industry could continue to rip it. So there you have it. That is Jaguar Wright on mainstream media, Pierce Morgan, uncensored. Um, so like I said, to be fair, I'm just going to read a little bit of her Wikipedia. Didn't have to search hard for this, but it says Jaguar Wright is known as an American singer. She has released five studio albums and is part of the OK Player Collective. Wright has performed and collaborated alongside rap acts such as The Roots, Jay-Z and Black Alicious. She was born in New Jersey and she moved to Philadelphia at 12 years old. It goes on to talk about her career, how she uh, performed with The Roots in uh, 1998. She appeared with Jay-Z on MTV Unplugged in 2001. She was in a Coca-Cola commercial, et cetera, et cetera. So she's in the industry. Now, like I said, Jaguar has been known to be on her YouTube channel and talk about powerful people in the industry. Some people call her a conspiracy theorist. Even DJ Vlad came on right after her on Pierce Morgan saying, I would never have Jaguar right on my show because she says a lot of things that are salacious. But, but she has been saying a lot of salacious things about Diddy and about Kim Porter. And it seems like she was right about Diddy. Just like I talked to you guys yesterday about, um, uh, my gosh, uh, Wendy Williams. She was on the radio for years talking about Diddy and nobody believed her. And she came out yesterday and was like, I feel vindicated finally that people are listening to me. So I'm not saying that these things are, are, are true about Jay-Z and Beyonce that she's saying. All I'm saying is that she's been saying these things about Diddy and Jay. Turns out the Diddy things look like they could be true. He still has his, his time in court, but we'll see. But... Is, is Jay-Z and Beyonce going to be implicated? Has Jaguar been right for this past four years? Who knows? But um, I do actually have more because I'm going to talk to you guys now in our second lead story about the author who alleges to have tapes of Jay-Z, Beyonce, Will Smith, and all of this stuff. And it, it, this is just, it, it just gets deep. But let's go to um, the uh, lead story number two and talk about the author of the Kim Porter memoirs. Let's go. All right. In our second lead story, author of Kim Porter's book says Kim had tapes of Diddy having relations, air quotes, with Jay-Z, Will Smith, and others. Okay. So I told you guys yesterday, um, and I played a couple of little clips from his interview, but I told you that I was going to sit down and watch the whole thing and come back and talk to you guys about it. So it's two hours and 15 minutes. I watched it for you guys. So you wouldn't have to. Okay. Um, now there's a lot of things that this guy is saying that I don't believe when it comes to him and this flash drive that he has, he claims that Kim Porter's friends, gave him a flash drive and that's 
where he got the book idea and the stuff to write this book that he's put out on Amazon that Amazon now has taken back. Okay. But although that he is saying some things that just seem very far fetched and untrue because he hasn't proven it, there's a, the people are saying there's a lot of things that can be true. And he is saying, he is saying that he is actually going to produce finally the evidence so for people like me who don't believe him or maybe believe some things and don't believe, he's saying that if it comes to it and he's pushed to litigation, that he is going to prove um, the fact that he does have this flash drive. And on these flash drive, there are um, tapes um, with Will Smith and Jay-Z and others. He said, and I'm going to play the clip for you in a second. He says, um, Will Smith and Jay-Z can be bisexuals. Actually, you know what? Let me let me not even paraphrase power, paraphrase this guy. I'm gonna just play the clip. Listen to what he says about Will Smith and Jay Z and about them being bisexual. Um, here is uh, Ch- uh, Chris Todd, the author of Kim Porter's memoirs that have been taken down from Amazon just two days ago. Take a listen. You will be able to prove, mm-hmm. if pressed, that That's this hers. that this alleged hard drive that belongs to Kim. Mm-hmm. Um, there are allegations of Diddy's involvement in alleged sexual activities with celebrities, including Jay Z, Will Smith, and others. If you were to ask me to research and investigate that these guys were bisexual, there's a lot of evidence that they are, and you're going to see it come out. There's tapes of them, yeah. So the interviewer goes on to ask him, does he have any proof of these quote unquote tapes of Jay Z and Will Smith? And he says, um, no, but uh, somebody else does and they're in possession of it. And the interviewer goes and says, well, why did you publish that in the book if you haven't seen it? And sorry, if you're not in possession of it, he says, I might not be in possession of it, but I have seen it. And uh, he also goes on to say that there's only so much journalism or investigation that he could do. And he's like, well, what do you want me to do? Call up Will Smith and ask him himself. Of course, he's going to deny it. Right. So he, the interviewer also goes on to ask him uh, a few other things about the flash drive. Like I said earlier, and he says, I'm not going to give it up right now, but I have lawyers in place. Um, and he also said that he offered the flash drive to Diddy. He offered to not put this book out and Diddy said he's not interested. And that's the reason why he put it out. And he's saying that, he now is getting ready to lawyer up and he doesn't want to put out any more information or any more tapes. Again, the tapes of uh, Jay-Z and uh, Will Smith. Um, And he said that uh, he's going to lawyer up first and try to get money. So this is the one thing where I'm kind of like, okay, maybe he isn't lying because he's at least coming out and is like, yo, I'm doing this for money. He says people in Hollywood are making money off of this. So why shouldn't he? Somebody trusted him with the uh, with the hard drive and he is still offering it up for sale. So we might see these videos and we might see these transcripts that he alleges is true, but he wants money for them. And he also said that he's looking to maybe turn this into a movie. There's a lot of people doing um, documentaries and he's looking to maybe turn this into a scripted series. That's another thing he said. Um He says that, um, yeah, he's lowering up. And then the interviewer asked him, he said, are you the one who's making all of this money or is it also the person that gave you these flash drives who are allegedly Kim Porter's friends? And he said that he doesn't want to answer that, but he will tell us that they grossed $1 million off of Amazon in 14 days. He won't say who that money is going to and who it's split up or whatever, but at least he is being real saying, hey, I'm doing this for money. I tried to sell it to Sean. Nope, now I'm coming out doing interviews. I'm threatening. I have tapes. Jay-Z is on it. Will Smith is on it. You guys want to pay me? If you don't, I'm going to let it out. And he did say that he will let it out slowly. He said, and I quote, he said, if I let it out too quickly, it will shut down on Hollywood and the music industry and it will be obliterated. So he wants to let it out slowly because we, the public, won't be able to deal with it. You guys take from it what you want. Like I said, there's a lot of holes. If you want to watch the whole interview, there's a lot of holes in this um, with, you know, with Tupac and Kim Porter or whatever. But some of the things do sound like they could be real. So you guys take from it uh, what you will. But that is the latest uh, with Kim Porter's um, Kim. Sorry, Kim Porter's 
quote unquote author or mouthpiece that her friends are asking him to do so that they don't have to do it. Now let's jump over into the third lead story and let's talk about Diddy trying to get out on bail because he might be out next week. Let's go. All right, in our third lead story, all right, my friend Megan, the trial lawyer who is watching and presiding over the Diddy case, shout out to Megan, um, she was on one of the networks and they were talking about Diddy getting, uh, getting bail. I spoke with you guys about this, I think, last week. Diddy has two new lawyers, one of the best legal attorneys in the country, trial lawyer, and an appellate attorney. Um, now the appellate attorney is the one who is saying that she can, that she has uh, that he has a chance of getting out of jail. Um, she says thou that there are going to appeal this decision. He's been uh, denied two times bail, but she feels like she'll be able to get him out, and she's going to present her a uh, new case for bail to three judges it will be like a, a a trial actually you know what here let megan uh better describe it listen to megan um and she'll tell you more about it we'll talk about it on the other side diddy has added two heavyweights to his team they're appealing once again yes perhaps later this week maybe early next week there will be an actual opening brief and this will be a little different in that they have an actual panel three three circuit judges who consider it that's the word i was looking for it's a panel a three circuit panel of judges hey i'm not a lawyer i don't know these things that's why i depend on megan uh megan is actually going to be on the show so stay tuned for that we're actually going to have her on this week but there's not enough stuff going on i want to wait till we have some breaking diddy news uh to bring her on but she is going to come on and talk to you guys and answer your questions and all that but so diddy might get out on bail he has a new uh trial uh, lawyer, sorry, not a trial lawyer, uh, an appellate lawyer, and she is going to be speaking in front of a three circuit panel. And Megan feels like there is a chance, there is a chance that she may able to be able to get Diddy out on bail if she puts forth um, a convincing enough argument. And if anybody could do it, she can. I trust Megan. So um, we'll see, man. Diddy might be out next week. I think that's going to make things just get even more explosive and more crazy. Stay tuned, but let's now talk about um, Cassie and how Cassie is feeling. All right, in our fourth lead story, Cassie reportedly hurt by baby oil jokes and memes amid serious allegations against Diddy. Um, if you're scrolling through social media in recent weeks, you've most likely encountered jokes and memes regarding Diddy, particularly in excess of him using baby oil. However, for victims involved in the sexual assault and sex trafficking cases, this is far from a laughing matter. An insider who spoke exclusively with Daily Mail reveals that Diddy's ex Cassie Ventura is disgusted by the jokes and memes surfacing in the weeks leading up to his arrest. The source added that she feels hurt and is now attempting to distance herself from the news surrounding her ex who is facing lawsuits brought about by a hundred new victims. Cassie had heard mumblings about the class action suit, but broke down in tears when she was informed of the allegations that there was a child involved. She is planning to take time away from receiving updates because she is sickened and she hopes that anybody hurt receives justice and peace of mind. Um, it is really sad to see uh, that Cassie is hurting from this. And, you know, I don't think you could really falter for how she feels and but at the same time i don't think it's necessarily fair to to say that you're disgusted by people um making jokes that's what people are gonna do online you know and like and i know it's not a a, a laughing matter or a, a comedic matter but you know, people online are gonna find jokes in everything. I mean, people make jokes about 9-11. Um, even, um, I can't remember that comedian that his father passed away. Um, he dated, um, he dated, uh, my gosh, Kim Kardashian. I can't remember his name, but even he makes jokes about it. So, uh, you know, the jokes aren't, um, about her or the jokes are not about him doing things to her. The jokes are about the baby oil and the jokes are about the things that are excessive you know so when when the video came out of uh, of diddy actually hitting cassie outside the elevator nobody made jokes about that so 
again, I, I can't speak for uh, the victims, so I don't know how it feels. And like I said at the top, I can understand how she doesn't find it funny. But, you know, if, Ka if Cassie hears this or any other uh, anybody else who agrees with her, um, just remember that people are making jokes about the baby oil or about the, the funny things that they're finding funny in inside, of, um, inside of the incident that's happening. And I don't think anybody is actually making fun of the sexual assault allegations or about, you know, there being minors or about Cassie, um, you know, being abused outside the elevator. Nobody online is making uh, jokes about that, right? They're just, you know, they're really making jokes about the baby oil and about Diddy. So, but uh, yeah, I do feel for Cassie because, you know, she's being exploited and uh, I'm sure it can't be fun to relive all of this. So I, I see, I see both sides, man, but uh, shout out to Cassie. All right, this brings us to quick news. Ring my bell. All right, I'm running low on time, so this quick news is going to be really quick news. Cardi B accused of cheating with Stefan Diggs while pregnant with Offset's child. All right, I, I told you guys about this, I think, last week, and everybody was in uproar. Like, why is it okay for a man to cheat, um, but it's not okay for a woman to cheat if she's pregnant? We already had that debate. But now we are getting word that it was Stefan Diggs, who's an NFL player. Um, and it was uh, DJ Academics who leaked it a little bit on his stream. He kind of hinted it. But here's a clip. Take a listen. Oh, by the way, I did hear who the person was Offset allegedly called Cardi B with. I give y'all one clue. It's a, it's a football player. It's an NFL. <laughs> Yo, the conspiracy theorist in me, I feel like maybe Cardi asked uh, Academics to do this to get back at Offset. This... this I feel like that's really what's going on. Uh, here we go is rumor and speculation about Cardi cheating on Offset while being pregnant. Academics says he was told Cardi had slept with NFL player, um, causing speculation that it might be Stefan Diggs. Allegedly, Offset found out by going through Cardi B's phone and discovering that Cardi sent Stefan nude pictures and their convo confirmed that they had sex. I guess time will tell if this is in fact true. Stay tuned. So apparently Offset was going through her phone. Cardi was um, sending Stefan Diggs some pictures and she saw and he saw um, text messages that they had sex with each other. And that's why they're getting a divorce now. But again, like we said last week, um, Offset has been caught cheating on Cardi B hundreds of times, embarrassing her publicly hundreds of times. So nobody is faulting Cardi B uh, for cheating on Offset. And it, again, we're not going to have the, the conversation, but it's up to you to decide if it's okay for if a woman is splitting up with her husband and they're getting a divorce, if she is pregnant, if she if it's okay if she cheats on him. Y'all let me know what you think in the comment section below. Send me a DM or uh, send me... Um, yeah, so comment below or send me an email, trent at cfqr600.com. All right, in our second quick story, Russell Simmons could have his assets seized after failing to pay $3 million settlement to multiple women, including a woman who accused him of sexual assault. Um, all right, Russell Simmons might be enjoying his time away, but his money is needed in the U.S. now. According to new court reports, he owes $3 million to three women because he failed to pay, the women can submit paperwork to a judge to begin other collection methods like taking his health, cars, etc. Although he never admitted to any wrongdoing, Simmons pledged to pay $1.2 million to one woman and a half a million dollars to each of the other women. More than 20 women have accused Russell Simmons of sexual assault. Simmons admitted that he's been in compromising positions, but took nine lie detector tests and attempt to prove his innocence. He is currently in Bali and there is no telling if he will return. I'm sure most of you by now, I've spoken about this before. Russell Simmons has been accused, like, I, like the article just said, of sexual assault. People say that he's hiding out in, in Bali and he's like, yeah, I come back to the US all the time. He never stays here long and not long enough for anybody to press charges. And I think um, Bali probably doesn't have an um, extradition, but it looks now like he might have to, uh, you know, cough up his cars or his houses because he needs to pay these women $3 million. Let's, let's see what happens. I'm sure we'll find out some more news next week. All right. In our third quick story, 
Bank of America seems to be the third major institution hit with an outage this week. The bank's customers started experiencing issues yesterday with both mobile and website. When customers logged into their accounts, many were met with quite the shock when their bank accounts showed a zero balance. While the outage may be appear to be over, it's not immediately clear how many Bank of America users were ultimately affected. Affected. Bank of America has yet to provide a reason for this outage. Um, I know a couple of people in the U.S. that were affected by this. Um, and the funny thing is, is that if you had any money in your checking or savings account, that showed up as zero. But if you had any debt, oh, the debt was still there. Oh, you owe this on your credit card. You owe this on your mortgage. You owe that on your line of credit. But if you had, you know, any money in your checking or savings, they wiped that out. But, but. We all knew that wasn't going to last and they have fixed it and nobody has lost a penny. I don't know what else things don't happen in reverse sometimes. Put some money in my people's account at Bank of America, all right? All right, in our fourth quick story, Common and Jennifer Hudson speak about his recent comments on marriage. He says, if I should be married, it would be to Jennifer Kate Hudson. Um... Jennifer Hudson asked her man a comment about his recent comments on marriage, and he made it clear if he were to get married, it would be to her. All right, I think Common was on a radio show, and then he was on uh, his wifey's um, uh, talk show, and of course she confronted him about it. I have a little clip. Take a listen. I heard you didn't even out there talk about marriage, Karen. Uh, what's that about? I was asked about marriage. I just answered honestly. I said, if I should be married, it will be the Jennifer Kate Hudson. <laughs> All right, if you all know, Common is an old school original player. I mean, this guy has been with a lot of beautiful black women in the industry. Serena Williams, Erica Badu, uh, Sanai Lathan, like the list goes on and on. I'm happy to see him finally settling down and of course, uh, of course, with a queen like Jennifer Hudson. So I love this. I'm a big fan of Common and a big fan of Jay Hudson. So um, I hope one day they actually do get married and have some babies. All right. In our fifth quick story, Eminem is going to be a grandpa. His daughter, Haley Jade, revealed the news in a video for his song Temporary. If you recall, Haley married her husband in may congratulations to the soon-to-be grandpa um yo man i i can't believe eminem is going to be a grandfather it's crazy um yeah for any of you eminem fans out there y'all know how crazy eminem was and you know he was doing all this craziness of course when he was a dad and he had Haley. we all know the problems that he had with his mom and his baby mom or whatever uh nice to see that um, him and Haley are still super close. I, me- I remember talking about the wedding. 50 Cent went to the wedding um, and all of that. And it's nice to see now that Haley is married. You know, Eminem is not on drugs anymore. And he has, has, he has a good relationship with her. So um, I'm a big Eminem fan. I know about his history. And to see what he was like, the, his drug addiction, and, and where he has come to now, it's just amazing to see. And a little bit unbelievable that Eminem, Eminem is a grandfather. It's crazy. Well, sorry, going to be a grandfather. All right, in our sixth and final quick story, Sydney Starr discloses the removal of her P word or D word, whatever you want to call it, uh, revealing that Darius McRae, better known for his role as Eddie Winslow on Family Matters, paid for the procedure. Yo, this is the second time this week I'm talking about somebody from Family Matters. Remember Carl Winslow? He was accused of having sexual relations with Diddy. And now, you know, Eddie Winslow is with Sydney Starr. For those of you who don't know who Sydney Starr is, she's a famous transgender. Um, she was like a, I wouldn't say a video vixen, but she came out on the scene, um, you know, as, as a female. And a lot of people didn't even know that she was a transgender. Um, and then, we saw Eddie with her and then he was like, Oh, I didn't know that she was a transgender. So she had people fooled for a couple of years. And then he's like, Oh, I'm not with her. Lo and behold, now a couple of years later, it looks like they're in a relationship. He paid for her surgery. So she's post op now. Um, I have a little clip of them on, um, no jumper. Take a listen. Um, I had the surgery. The dick is gone. It's gone now. Shut up. What'd you do with it? Can I have it? He paid for it with that saw money. Yo, shout out to Andy Winslow, man. Just own own your truth, man. You know, like, own your truth. Do what you got to do, bro. It's, it's 2024. If you're in love with Sydney Starr, 
I like this, man. Come out and speak your truth. All right, this brings us to question of the day. What's the most common thing men tend to lie about? Okay, you know, we got a lot of answers for this one from the ladies, but like I said, I got to run through this quick. All right, uh, the first one is mental health. All right, I, I second that. Men do definitely lie a lot about mental health. By the way, for those of you who are going to be in New York City, um, October the 12th, I'll be with Charlemagne, Dr. Alfie for the for Charlemagne and Dr. Alfie's Mental Wealth Expo um, in Times Square at Marquee. So uh, check me out there. Tyrese is going to be there, Charlemagne, and like 30, 40 other people for a day about mental health. Men, stop lying about your mental health. All right. Um, sorry. Um, all right. So the, um, oh, oddly different 1973 said being single and being a good dad. I don't think, oh, okay. I see what she's saying. Men lie about being single. You're talking about married uh, men. All right. Um, big baby Chris said everything. They lie about everything. Next question. Um, Liz spirit said relationship status. Um, I knew this was going to happen. Uh, Christine seven, seven, eight, three said men are always lying about not having a wife. And, um, it's me. KLC said, whatever doesn't suit their situation, they're going to just create a lie about it. Um, Coco bougie hippie said the girl that he tells not to worry about (laughs) another girl said everything and anything. Um, another girl said a famous men's line is, Oh, she's just a friend. Men lie about their intentions. Um, Rexia Rexia Million said, um, I'll change. I'll go to therapy. Hey, don't use therapy to try to cheat on your woman, y'all. Always Precious said they always lying about their exes. I knew this was going to be all about cheating and all about women. Can we get some other stuff going on in here? Um, One girl said, oh, my gosh, where do we start? We don't have enough time being married. Oh, here's a funny one. Miss Linda 82 said men are always lying about what they can do in the bedroom. I lie. The more they talk about it, what they could do, the you, the, the more they never live up to it. Damn. That's shameful. Somebody said a lot of men normally lie about their emotional ability and time. Um, somebody else said how much money they really have looking rich on the internet, but then when they show up, they ain't got nothing. Um, Laughing Beauty 523 said their height and relationship status. How you gonna lie about your height and then you gotta have to show up? I just don't understand that, man. Um, Capital Beauty said last time they had an intimate relationship. All right. All right, here we go. Somebody said their their size, relationship status, cheating, that everything is okay that they're having babies on the way, financial situations. So it looks like sexual, money, and cheating. All right, that is the uh, top three. You guys uh, write me, let me know. What do you think is the thing that men lie most about? Send me an email, trend at cfqr600.com. Comment below this video. Send me a DM at Trend Out Loud. All right, this brings us to sports news. Caitlin Clark wins WNBA Rookie of the Year. All right, we're not surprised by that. Caitlin Clark has officially been crowned the 2024 WNBA Rookie of the Year. Noting some of her stats from her first season as a professional basketball player, the WNBA shared online, Clark averaged 19.2 points, 5.7 RPG. What's RPG? Is that rebounds? Yeah, I think rebounds. And led the league with uh, 8.4 APG, which is assists, becoming the first Rick, the first rookie to ever lead in that category. I think she's saying in the assist category. Clark, who plays for the Indiana Fever, received 66 votes from the national panel of 67 sports writers and broadcasters. Chicago Sky forward Angel Reese received one vote. Yo, shout out to whoever voted for Angel Reese, man. My girl. Uh, Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't have enough time to get into this, man. All I know is shout out to Angel Reese, all right? All right, that is the Friday episode. Thank you guys for kicking with me all week. Make sure you guys go back to our podcast and YouTube platforms and check out all the shows from the past week. That's something you, you guys could do this weekend. I know we still have nice weather, but make sure y'all check out all the shows from this past week. We had some really good ones. 
All right, before I let you guys go, I want to remind you guys of all the ways to keep up with the Trend Out Loud podcast. If you're used to watching this podcast on YouTube or listening to it on podcast platforms, please try to check us out on cfqr600.com or 600 AM on your radio if you're in the Montreal area. We do play the Trend Out Loud, uh, the Trend Out Loud podcast weekdays from 11 to 12, but we mix it in with 90s and 2000s hip hop and R&B. I select the music so you know it's going to be dope. Um, but make sure you check it out. It's a great hour and it's a great way to break up your day. If you're having meetings, you're having your this, you're having your that. It's a great way to just get your entertainment news and also listen to some really dope old school hip hop and R&B. Vice versa, for those of you who are used to listening on CFQR 600 and you can always catch a show between 11 to 12 because you're busy, I get it. Don't worry, you never have to miss a show. Um, we upload every episode on YouTube or podcast platforms. Just go to your desired site. Type in Trend Out Loud, the show will pop up. Don't forget to hit the follow and subscribe button so that you can be notified every time we upload a new show. And if you're like me and you like to watch your podcast, there's YouTube, but now also Spotify supports video, so you can check us out there. Uh, lastly, you could uh, follow me on any social platform at Trend Out Loud. Don't forget to follow the media company, Exu City Media, on Instagram and and. One last thing, for those of you listening on CFQR, stay tuned for my boy, Don Smooth, with the Midday Mix. You know he's bringing the heat, and he always brings the heat, especially on Fridays, because he wants you guys to get ready for the weekend. That's what I'm going to do. My weekend starts now. Thank you guys for kicking with me. I will see you Monday. Peace! Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, Turn Out Loud. Peace!